We're going to use the definition of the derivative to find f prime of x of the function at that point, negative 3, comma 4. So f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So the limit as h approaches 0, take x plus h, put it into the function for every value of x. Give the quantity x plus h squared plus 2 times the quantity x plus h plus 1 minus the original function x squared plus 2x plus 1 all over h. So the limit as h approaches 0, distribute out x plus h squared to get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, distribute the 2 plus 2x plus 2h plus 1, and distribute the minus sign minus x squared minus 2x minus 1 all over h. The x squareds cancel, 2x's also cancel, and the 1's cancel. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2xh plus h squared plus 2h all over h. I'm going to factor out the h's that are in common from the numerator. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 of h times the quantity 2x plus h plus 2 all over h. Reduce the h's, replace in 0 for h. So f prime of x is equal to 2x plus 2. We need f prime of x at that location, negative 3, so replacing in negative 3, 2 times negative 3 plus 2, which makes negative 4. So f prime of negative 3 is equal to negative 4. So we're now going to use the alternate form to find the derivative of f prime of x at x equals 1. The alternate form is f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a, all over x minus a. f prime of 1, then, is the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, which is x squared minus 3x, minus f of a. On the side, we'll calculate f of a, which is f of 1, which is equal to 1 squared minus 3 times 1, which is negative 2. So we'll subtract negative 2 all over x minus 1. So the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 3x plus 2 all over x minus 1. If we try to plug in 1, we still have a problem, so we're going to have to factor out the top. So make x minus 2 times x minus 1 over x minus 1. Now the x minus 1s can eliminate. Now when we go to plug in 1, calculate to get negative 1. So f prime of 1 is negative 1. Now we're going to find dy dx, which is just different notation for finding the derivative. So that's the same formula, limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h, minus f of x all over h. We have the limit as h approaches 0, taking x plus h, putting it to the function for x, 1 over x plus h plus 3, minus the original function, 1 over x plus 3, all over h. So if the limit as h approaches 0, we have 1 over x plus h plus 3 minus 1 over x plus 3. And we'll need to get a common denominator, so we'll multiply the first fraction by x plus 3 in the numerator and the denominator. The second one by x plus h plus 3, again in the numerator and the denominator. And that's all over h. So if the limit as h approaches 0, distributing the x plus 8, 3 for the first term over the quantity x plus 3 times x plus h plus 3, then minus x plus h plus 3 over the quantity of x plus 3 times quantity x plus h plus 3. And that's all over h. We have the limit as h approaches 0, combining the like terms in the numerator and writing it as one fraction, distributing the minus sign. So the x's cancel out and the 3's also cancel out. So we have negative h over the quantity of x plus 3 times the quantity x plus h plus 3 
instead of saying divide by h in a denominator, we'll write it on the side with a division sign. So we have the limit as h approaches 0, negative h over the quantity x plus 3 times the quantity x plus h plus 3. We'll change that into multiplying by the reciprocal of h. So the h's can reduce. And we have now the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 over x plus 3 times the quantity x plus h plus 3. 0 can go in for h now. So negative 1 over the quantity of x plus 3 twice. So negative 1 over x plus 3 squared is dy dx. In our fourth example, this is again just a notation to find the derivative. So d dx is just to take the derivative of 3x squared minus 5. So we're going to do the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So we're placing x plus h into our function. We have the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 times the quantity x plus h squared minus 5, then minus the original function was 3x squared minus 5. It's all over h. So distributing the x plus h, we get x plus h squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 5. Distributing the negative sign, minus 3x squared plus 5 all over h. Distributing the 3, we'll have 3x squared plus 2 6xh plus 3h squared minus 5 minus 3x squared plus 5. All over h. 3x, is, 3x squared is cancel, the 5s cancel. We're left with a limit as h approaches 0 of 6xh plus 3h squared all over h. Factoring out the h from the numerator, the limit as h approaches 0 of h times the quantity 6x plus 3h all over h, the h is reduced, 0 goes in for h, and you're left with 6x. So the derivative of 3x squared minus 5 is 6x. Now we're going to do the equation of a tangent line. Remember the equation of a tangent line is y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. We have the point, so y value of 2, and we have the x value of 1. We just need to calculate the slope. So in order to calculate the slope, we need to do the slope of a tangent line. We can use the derivative or the alternate form. Let's choose the alternate form. So we're going to calculate f prime of 1, which is going to be the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x minus f of 1 all over x minus 1. We have the limit as x approaches 1, f of x, which was x squared plus 1, minus f of 1, which was the value of 2 given in the problem, all over x minus 1. So we have the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Factoring the numerator, we'll have x minus 1 times x plus 1, all over x minus 1. Reduce your x minus 1, substitute in the value of 1, and we'll get 2. So the slope at 1 is 2, so we can place 2 into our equation of our tangent line. And then we have our answer.